Okay. Welcome. Kelly Dunlap here, fat loss and hormonal coach. Say hello when you are here. I am actually just getting myself set up and we're going to rock and roll. Awesome. Okay. So I see you guys are hopping on. Awesome. We're going to share the screen here in just a minute. And then we're going to get going. Okay. So say hello when you get here. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome. I'm so excited that you are here. Seriously. All right. So all right. All right, guys, let's do this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so welcome, Kelly Dunlap. I'm going to share my screen. We're gonna get started. We're gonna learn some valuable information tonight. And I have my phone right here. Here we go. Beautiful, awesome. Okay, so I just wanna say hello to everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Jillian, Patricia, Kelly. Susan, Alicia, Kathy, Amanda, awesome, Lisa, Sandy, fantastic. Okay, let's rock and roll. You guys are probably like, come on already. I want to hear the information. So let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so we're good. I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to get sharing some super valuable information. Okay, so here we go. Let me get to my presentation. You guys, what you're looking at right here is a very complicated email automation. <laughs> when we do these things, you'd be very surprised what goes on behind the scenes to get all of this put together and to get everybody in the same place. It's pretty crazy. All right, so let's, let's rock and roll. Here we go. Cool. Okay, welcome, day one. How to lose stubborn belly and back fat with Kelly Dunlap. Okay. So you are in the right place if you are ready to tuck in your shirt because you can. Okay. Because you have the option. There's nothing greater in life than having options and choices, right? Do you agree? If so, give me a heck yes. If you are tired of your belly growing larger and you just don't know why you are tired of not being able to wear a bra without stuff just spilling out everywhere. Yuck, it drives you crazy, doesn't it? If you are committed to taking action and 100% responsibility for your own results so that you can finally lose the stubborn fat and get your waistline back, okay? And that you are ready to feel amazing naked in snug clothes if you want and be able to shop anywhere. Do you know how many times I hear from people that say, I don't like to have sex with my husband because I don't want him to see me naked? You know, I hear that a lot, like way more than you would think. It's pretty crazy. So if you can relate to any of these, man, oh man, you are in the right place. And I'm so happy that you are here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna share this amazing woman with you. And I think she's actually with us right now. And this beautiful woman, Alicia, this, look at how amazing this is. Just within three weeks time, this is the transformation that took place. And you know what the great news is? We're still working on this. We are still going. But I want you to see with my method, how she was able to lose just this amazingness. Look at, she lost three inches in her waist within three weeks. Look at the difference. Do you see how her hourglass shape is coming back? Now look at the far right picture. That to me looks like somebody in their twenties. Okay. Amazing, right? If you agree, say amazing or congratulations, Alicia. <laughs> she did such a great job. And look at that. 
just, and she's still going and going. So she's just whittling away. Okay, next is Deb. Look at that. If you guys have been following for a while, you guys know I love to share the successes, right? She's lost 22 pounds and over 20 and a half inches to date. She's swimming in her clothes. She had to tie her shirt back and to show me, you know, how she was, how her progress, okay? And she's still going, still going, still going. She's doing awesome. So congratulations, Deb and Alicia. Now, this isn't for you. If you're looking for a quick fix, I can tell you that right now. I am not a quick fix coach. In fact, I can't stand that. I used to be the queen of quick fixes myself and I know what it does metabolically. I know that it's just putting a band-aid over oozing shit that just needs to be cleaned up. So quick fixes, you will not find with me. So if you're looking for something quick and instant, then we can part ways right now. <laughs> okay. So anything that I teach you, you are going to have to put real work in. Okay. But you will never, ever have to diet again. You will never have to be curious as to what do I do now? Because you will learn how your body works and operates and you will know, like you will be absolutely educated in everything about yourself. Okay. All right. Next. My promise to you is going to deliver you incredible value. Nothing I am teaching you is based on theory and everything that you are learn that you're going to learn has been tested and proven, okay? When you show up for all these three days. Now, again, these are not gonna be back to back. It's going to be today, Sunday, and then next Tuesday. So we're spreading this out and there's a reason for it. So you gotta stay here till the end so that you understand why, okay? clarity finally around why you have had such a hard time losing belly and back fat. And I really focus on just, I always just say belly fat and I put back fat in there because it just, they go simultaneously together generally. And understanding around what causes belly fat keeps most women from maintaining their signature hourglass figure and the overall kick in the pants and motivation you need to finally get rid of the fat once and for all. Sound good? Yes. Okay. So get ready. Let's get ready. We're going to learn a ton. Let's get inspired to take immediate action and let's move forward. So how would your life change if you felt more comfortable in your own clothes and more importantly, in your own skin? And what I mean by that is you could walk around naked and feel good about it. You could change your clothes at the gym and get naked and not feel like you got to go to a changing booth and hide. You know, those ladies, are you one of those ladies? I pretty much just like, okay, you know what I mean? I'm discreet about it, but I'm not like, oh my God, I feel so hideous. You know, I'm not like that. You know, it took me a while to get there. Right. But I want you to feel so comfortable in your skin that you're like, you know what? I feel good. I've worked for this. I feel great. Right. So how would it feel if you were able to love looking in the mirror again? If you were to feel empowered to make decisions of your own, do you have any idea how many people say to me, I got to ask my husband for what? Like, I will never understand that. I don't get that, you know, or I don't know. I need to, see, I need to see what other people think. You know what I mean? It's like, why this is your health. This is your body. This is your results. This is you. Why do you have to look to other people to empower you? So what I'm trying to get at is when you feel like shit and when you're not like, you know, taking care of yourself and, and when, you, when you feel lost and you're just stuck, you feel unempowered. So therefore you do unempowered things. You make unempowered decisions. I want to help you be an empowered individual. This is not just about weight loss. This is about empowerment, changing your life. Okay. You feel more confident than you ever have to feel bathing suit ready all year round that there is no, I'm going on vacation. So I got to go on a diet. There's none of that shit that you look good all the time. Okay. All the time. Here we go. Day one. There's two types of belly fat. There's hormonal situations that we're going to talk about. 
And we're going to talk about your metabolic blueprint. Now, if you got one of my 10,000 reminder emails or one of my, you know, reminder texts and all of that, I said 10,000 times, take this quiz before tonight. And there is a reason for it. Okay. In the email, I specifically said, take the quiz and also take a look at this document. And there is a picture of a plate. Now we're going to get to that at the very end. So make sure you stick around. Okay. So we're going to dive deep into the two different types of belly fat. One of them is more difficult to burn and what you can do about it. The three different practices that you can set in place right now and specific details about your personal metabolic blueprint and the nutrition to complement that. Okay. So are you somebody who notices that their composition is changing and you're feeling confused about it? There's so many women that feel like they're just gaining this midsection that it's out of control. Do you feel like you don't have control of your own body in that sense? You know, because after all, the typical fat distribution for women is to be more in the bust, hips, thighs, and less in the waist. So we are known for our signature hourglass shape, right? I mean, let's just, let's talk about this for a minute. Men too, you know, us women, we broad shoulders, smaller waist, right? So humans, I guess you would say, we are visibly attracted to more of that waist to hip chest ratio, right? Now, if we were to talk about the old school 36, 26, 36, that's kind of what I'm talking about. But I don't want to get into a body image thing. It's not about that. No matter what size you are, having that indentation there is always going to be visibly appealing to us humans. Okay. So why is some fat stubborn and difficult to lose? Okay. Because unfortunately, some fat like belly fat is very difficult to burn. And this is why there's two different types of adrenergic receptors. If I say that word wrong during this presentation, don't be surprised because it's a tricky one. <laughs> I always want to say like adrogenic or something always trips me up. There's alpha and beta receptors. And I really didn't want to go to science class with you tonight, but I just wanted you to understand that there's two different receptors that we're dealing with here. And this is what makes the difference with the whole, you know, being able to burn things easily or not, or why something's not moving. Okay. So alpha, that is slow to release fat. So think A for anti-burn, meaning very difficult to burn. So alpha receptors, anti and slow. Beta, think fast release, think B for burn, okay? Got it? So A, anti, B for burn. In addition to having a direct impact on fat release, these receptors also impact blood flow. The more alpha receptors meaning less blood flow to an area and the more beta receptors, that means greater blood flow to an area. Okay. So if you've heard me talk about the process of fat burning, this is part of it. So fat burning, you have to first release the fat. Second, it has to be then um, transported to another cell in order to get burned. Now, in order for that transportation to take place, we have to have blood flow in order to do so. Okay. Now, if we don't have good blood flow, there's no fat burning that's going to be taking place. Got it? So it's a very, it's, there is a process, you know, it's a, it's a scientific thing, you know? All right. Now, so there are two types of belly fat. Okay. So there's visceral abdominal fat, which has more beta receptors and greater blood flow. And it is very responsive to, and that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> that's a typo. It's very responsive to nutrition and exercise is what that was supposed to say. Okay. So visceral, what is visceral? Guess what? The good news is I'm going to give you a visual. Okay. So just to kind of go off track on, I should have taken a picture of this actually, but I'm just going to show you this. So we're going to go off these slides here for just a second. Actually, I think I'll stop the screen share because then it might, um, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Okay. So this is actually a scan of me, okay? I partner with a company where we are able to do scans on individuals, my clients, and we were able to see 
what their actual body fat looks like. I am able to also see bone density and all this stuff, right? Now, as you will see, this red stuff, that's all fat. So this is, this is the, the subcutaneous fat. Now, on the inside here, you'll see little specks of red, okay? That is the visceral fat. Now, you want that to be, just a little side note, under a pound, under one pound. Now, if you have over a pound of visceral fat, we're in trouble. That's very high risk for heart disease, diabetes, all of these things, okay? Because visceral fat is very internal and around the organs and all that stuff. So that's the difference between, the, between those two different types of fat, okay? So the subcutaneous fat is the one that you can actually pinch an inch, like you can grab your side and pinch. The visceral, you won't know what's there unless you get a scan like this. Okay, now I'm not saying you gotta go get a scan. But what I'm just trying to tell you is that this is something that you can get done. Um, it is pretty cool that I've partnered with them. And I've actually, this is interesting, is I've actually had, for example, a client recently take the, the, the test. And we instantly went from aesthetics to, holy shit, we have to get your health in a much better place. So do you see how valuable that scan is? amazing. Okay. Now let's go back. So that shows you the difference. It, does that make sense? Give me a yes or a no. Um, if it does not, and if you have any questions, you know, please um, go ahead and comment with them. And then I will make sure to answer them at the end. Cause if I answer them while we are chatting, I get very distracted. Okay. All right. So the visceral is the inner. Okay. That has more beta receptors. Great news, right? What did I tell you earlier? B for burn. Easily burn, very responsive, okay? Oops, let me go here. I gotta make it larger. Okay. Then there's the subcutaneous fat, which has more alpha, okay? More alpha receptors and less blood flow. And it's very difficult to burn. So as you saw, I've got, you know, I think my body fat was somewhere around 29%. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on losing some of the weight from having Ayana. And that's okay. It's a journey. It's a process. I know it takes time. And I'm not over here freaking out, reducing my calories and exercising more and eat less and going into panic mode because that is not going to work either. <laughs> okay. So um, the subcutaneous, more alpha, less blood flow, and very difficult to burn. Okay. So just so that you understand be between the difference in the two. Okay, so remember the amount of blood flow to an area is important because fat needs to be released from the fat cell and move through the bloodstream to get to another cell where it can be burned. There's another typo. I can be burned. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so please give me a one if that makes sense to you and give me a two if that does not. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about belly fat and hormones. So calories matter, but... There is a hormonal situation that determines where fat is stored. You've heard me talk about this over and over and over again, and we're going to talk about it again. Okay. To lose fat, you need to have both a caloric deficit and a hormonal balance, people. It's not just one sided. It's like trying to drive your car without oil in it. You have got to have a caloric deficit, and a hormonal balance. Do you hear me? Hormones matter big time. Okay. This is why I'm just going to tell you, if you have seen my clients, you've seen me talk about these people. They are not losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, because they have an understanding of the hormonal balance. They are not yo-yo dieting. They don't diet anymore. They understand hormones, okay? Peggy, maybe hit on the video or maybe you got to touch on it, something. I'm not sure, but I will be sending out a replay later, okay? So to lose stubborn fat, particularly stubborn belly fat, you need to understand the hormones that are involved. Now, as you know, I specialize in, with women, but I do have male clients too, okay? Do I understand both anatomies? Absolutely. 
Okay. But in women, because we women generally around this age, especially when we get over 40 and all that stuff, we, we end up in this position, right? Insulin, cortisol, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. These are the hormones that are involved. Most of the time people will say, oh, you know, they always lean towards estrogen and progesterone, not even knowing they're just assuming because they hear about estrogen and progesterone all the time. And they assume that they're stuck with this belly that has been created because of these hormones that they have no idea why is all this is going on. They just like, well, I'm in menopause. I just got to live with this belly. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you have an understanding of how these hormones communicate together and how you are able to manipulate things, the way that you're eating and the way that you're carrying on in your lifestyle, you do not have to have that belly. Okay, that is a choice that you are making. That is a story that you are telling yourself and that you are believing as your fact. It's not true. It's a lie. Just saying. Okay. Now, you've seen this before. Hormones are like humans. They act accordingly to the position or the place that they are in. So hormones like humans, depending on the situation they are in, will determine how they act. If I went to a toga party, I would be dressed much differently than I would if I went to a black tie event. If I went to a toga party, I would probably not be drinking fine wine. I'd probably be drinking beer out of a keg. If I went to a toga party, I'd probably eating burgers and hot dogs. If I went to a uh, you know, uh, black tie, I would be eating filet mignon and all of that. And I would be you know, acting in my best behavior. You know, uh, At the toga party, I might be standing on a chair hooting and hollering, right? So depending on the humans that I'm around and the whole scenario and situation will depend on how my hormones are communicating as well. Do you see? So you have to think of your hormones in the same way, depending on what's around and what the scenario is, and what the situation is, will, will depend on what happens within you in, um, internally. Okay. Does that make sense? Give me a one. If not, give me a two if you're completely confused. Okay. All right, so let's break down each one of these hormones so that you can have a little bit of understanding. Now, insulin, you've probably heard this probably more often because of the keto, which I'm, in, I'm just going to put this out there. I think keto is something that is necessary for a short amount of time. I personally don't think that it's something that should be a forever thing for people. I do think there is going to be some kickback. I do feel that people are going to end up with clogged arteries and all this stuff. Like there is going to be some backfire, you know, and I'm, you know, kind of like there was with the Atkins, right? So insulin, it is a fat storing hormone. Okay. It impairs the normal function of beta receptors, meaning that it, it impacts it in a negative way. Okay. So However, I don't want you to think as, as insulin is the complete bad guy because insulin also can be, it's, I call it your worst enemy and your best friend at the same time because it's kind of like a double personality that it has. Okay, now cortisol. This is another buzzword, right? It's associated with stress, okay? Now cortisol, I want you to hear me, those of you that have PCOS and that are menopausal. If you are more stress reactive, okay, listen, when you are menopausal, and when you do have PCOS, you are more stress reactive. What does that mean? It means you are way more sensitive to stress than somebody that is not menopausal or somebody that does not have PCOS. It means that you will respond to a stressor way more than somebody else that does not have that. Okay. So stress is a massive thing when it comes to these two things. Okay, so more stress reactive women will release more cortisol and have higher amounts of belly fat, whether they are thin or overweight. And I've mentioned this before. I can generally spot out a PCOS woman. Sometimes I know they have PCOS before they do. Oftentimes I'll say, do you have PCOS? I'm like, I mean, trust me, I don't just go up to random people, but I will say, do you have PCOS? because I've seen their pictures and whatever. And then they'll say, well, my doctor has kind of thought maybe, and I say, well, guess what? I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure 99% that you are, that you are somebody that has PCOS because of just not only just the way that they look, 
but also because of some other things that they have. There's other characteristics that go along with PCOS as well. And again, you know that I am planning to do a whole thing just dedicated to PCOS. And as a PCOS, and as a matter of fact, I feel that I'm leaning towards doing the same thing towards menopausal, just, you know, focusing on that. But again, that is to be determined. But just telling you that these are things that I am extremely familiar with. You cannot just go on any old regular diet and you cannot just have this, this life of massive stress. If you are menopausal or PCOS, you have got to manage your stress. Okay. Moving on off the soapbox. Okay. Estrogen. So estrogen balance is critically important. Okay. It is largely responsible for how fat is distributed on a woman. It makes you more insulin sensitive, which means excess calories are less likely to be stored as belly fat. The saying is, is that when you have more estrogen, meaning like the first half of your cycle, wink, wink, you can handle eating more carbohydrates and things like that. And you're less likely to gain weight as you would wink, wink, when you have less estrogen in your second half of your cycle, when you are more progesterone dominant. Okay. So estrogen is definitely your friend. You know, when you're on your cycle and you have those like, God, I feel like I could swoo. You know what I mean? It's those, it's those moments where you could really kick ass at the gym, or you find that you get this surge of energy and you just want to clean your whole house. That's estrogen helping you out. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, once again, don't, don't hesitate to comment. I will get to them. Um, but, um, you know, I'll do that at the end. Progesterone. Okay, has an indirect influence on belly fat due to its relationship with cortisol. So once again, this has everything to do with what? The toga party and the black tie, right? So it's, it's all about when those two are around each other, it's not gonna be a good situation, okay? It opposes the fat storing action that cortisol has on the belly. So in other words, oh, I'm sorry, this is the other one. I'm sorry, I read this wrong. Progesterone, sorry, this, this is a better situation because in other words, it's going to protect you from gaining. So this is actually an okay situation. Now, we're gonna talk here in a minute about when it's not a good situation. So again, progesterone has an indirect influence on belly fat due to its relationship with cortisol. So it opposes it, meaning that it is going to be okay, all right? So now we're going to move on here. Okay, so testosterone. So testosterone to estrone ratio, again, is a crucial thing for women, all right? So women with higher testosterone levels, like those with PCOS, have thicker waists. There's none of that, right? You end up being more barrel, barrel middled, which is frustrating. I'm actually in a group just kind of doing some market research on PCOS and man, oh man, I feel my heart just goes out to these women that have this PCOS. It is just, and it's an awful effort, epidemic that's going on. It really is. Um, also menopausal women, um, because testosterone levels are typically dominant over the estrogen and progesterone. Okay, so that is why, all right? So testosterone, you guys, is a major thing. And it's overlooked and not talked about. Okay. All right. So again, if you have any questions, if I'm confusing you, let me know. Okay. So let me just tell you this, read this very carefully. The female formula to basically for belly fat. So if you want belly fat, this is the formula. <laughs> so I'm just saying, just read this carefully. Female formula for belly fat. All right means that you are putting together this combination, insulin, cortisol times the testosterone and minus the estrogen equals belly fat. Now I'm going to give you this in a more practical breakdown. Okay. So hold on. This actually means, and I'm going to break it down again. Insulin and cortisol combined with excess testosterone and low estrogen equals belly fat. Now you might be sitting here going, well, this is not me. This doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm not menopausal. I don't have PCOS. And I don't, I don't want you to think that I'm just targeting those two special populations. I'm not. This goes for everybody. And I'm going to tell you why, because everybody has insulin. Everybody has cortisol, right? 
Yes, you're everybody's estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. We all have fluctuations in those. All of us do. Okay. We all have it. I have it. You have it. It just depends on where we're at within our fluctuation and where we're at in our life and how we're operating in our life. Okay. So a more practical way, this is what everybody needs to see. Fat plus sugar, okay, or starchy or carb, plus adding in stress equals belly fat. Okay, let's do this one more time. Fat plus sugar or starchy carb times stress equals belly fat. That right there, my friend, is your shit storm. Okay. How often are we eating these things together? How often are we stressed out? How much are we managing our stress? Are we even considering our stress in our weight loss program? Probably not. Not unless you work with me. Okay. Stress is a massive thing. And if you work with me, you don't eat these things together. You just don't. Okay. So give me one if that is understandable or two if it's not or if you think holy shit this is mind blowing then give me like a oh my god i had no idea okay so just tell me what you think so let's look at that again fat plus sugar or starch now what is starch what is starch i don't understand what starch is well starch is just your starchier carb okay starch is a carbohydrate but it's just starchier okay it's like a starchier carb so like, um, I'll give you examples that are not starch, but they're carbohydrates. That would be like, you know, apples, berries, um, you know, uh, veggies like broccoli, uh, green beans, asparagus, you know, starchier carbs would be bananas, um, pineapple, mango, and obvious stuff like crackers and bread and bread and pasta and pasta <laughs> and corn and all of these other kinds of foods. Okay, that makes sense? Good, Susan says, oh my God, exactly, right? This, my friend, is why I am a hormonal fat loss coach. Now, does it make sense? Now, do you understand why I call myself a hormonal fat loss coach? Okay, because I consider, I help you to consider your hormones. Not everybody does. In fact, most people don't, okay? So when stress is added to a diet that is heavy in starches, fats, and sugars, you are in for big fucking trouble. I added it in there. I call it the atomic bomb for fat storage, okay? Stress releases cortisol, and cortisol added to insulin is the most problematic hormonal combination for belly fat. dun da da, -da! Right? Are you guys like, what the holy hell? Oh my God. Right? If so, give me a holy hell. Oh my God. I'm just teasing. <laughs> see, I see Jill is like, oh my God. See, you guys, this is the shit you need to know. This is what you need to know. This is why I became a hormonal fat loss coach. This is why I created an academy. I kid you not. When I learned this stuff, I was literally like this. Oh my God. Like I really wish somebody was on the couch with me, but just to kind of get, I'll take you back there. I can see myself on my couch. I was pregnant and I was learning, 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 learning because I was called to this course, right? Cause I'm a retired personal trainer, but I always wanted to be in the nutrition stuff. Right. And I found this course and I fell upon Dr. Jay Tita. He's my mentor. And oh my God, I love him. And he is going to be on my podcast in February. And I'm so excited to share him with you. And when he taught me all of this stuff, my mind was blown. Like, where have you been all of my life kind of thing? Okay. So I was seriously like, holy shit, I'm going to be able to change a lot of lives. Hence the reason why I created the Metabolism Reboot Academy. Okay. Now moving on. Stress also increases hunger, which can lead to constant cravings and set you up for a physiology that is more likely to lose muscle and you do not want that. Okay. So ultimately that can lead to weight loss resistance. Not a situation that you want to find yourself in. 
Okay. Makes perfect sense. Yep. Ida says, holy heck. Sharon says, this is why I have belly fat for sure. Jill is, oh my godding. Shawnee's like, holy crap. This is when I eat stress, I eat junk food. Oh my God, this makes perfect sense. Da, da, da. Once again, let me bring around the scenario. The toga party and the black tie event. Introducing your hormones, my friends. Okay. Now, does this make sense? Does this make sense to you? This is why meal plans do not work. I will never, ever, ever give a meal plan, ever. If somebody says, I'm gonna give you a meal plan and get you all set up, you'll be like, no, I'm good. I am good. You wanna know why? Because they're not considering your hormones. If somebody tells you that they're gonna give you a meal plan, then that means they know nothing about the hormonal factor. Just saying, not trying to put other people down, but I'm just trying to make awareness here. Open up your eyes, okay? Meal plans don't work. And this is why, okay? So your personal metabolic blueprint, let's talk about this people. So now do you see why it is important and why meal plans will not work? If I gave you a meal plan that had all these starchy carbs and some fats in there and had all this other stuff that's combined and now actually, let's say you're menopausal or have PCOS, and I gave you this meal plan, I could be making things worse for you, okay? This is why when some people will say, well, Sally did this diet and she lost 20 pounds. Well, how come I'm not? I'm actually gaining weight, people. It's because of the hormonal factor. You see how passionate I am about this? It makes me crazy. And you know, like I said, I didn't always have this education behind me, but once I did, man, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I got on my horn. <laughs> you know, I wish I could stand on some podium and say, hello world, <laughs> listen up party people. We need to consider the hormones, okay? Okay, so let's move on here. Here's the three practices that you can take away today. No matter where you are at, you can take away these practices, okay? And I'm gonna send you some bonus stuff tonight. <gasps> some bonus gifts are coming your way. Ah, I'm excited. You need to relax. You need to prioritize your sleep. I want, to, you know what, do me a favor. Comment with how many hours you think is the adequate amount of rest that you need. Comment with that. Tell me how many hours you think. And you need to figure out your own carbohydrate tipping point. Now, some of you know this because you've worked with me. Some of you know exactly what this is. Some of you are like, what the fuck is a carbohydrate tipping point? What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't get that, what? My job as a coach is to help my clients find their tipping points with everything, with their carbs, fats, proteins, sleep, stress, all that stuff. Okay, Lisa says at least seven, Sharon says eight, Susan says eight, Kathy says eight. Hi, Kath. All right, yeah, so we're right in the wheelhouse, exactly. So we want to get at least seven, okay? Now, if you guys have seen any of my lives that I've talked about lately, you know, sleep is something that I'm struggling with over here. Hence the understanding that I know that that's part of my issue with weight not being released. But when you have an understanding of what, what is, you know, what you're working with in your environment, then you understand why your physiology is doing what it's doing. So then what, what happens? You have a better feeling up here. You're not going crazy. Like what the hell? What the hell, man? I'm not losing any weight. So I know that because my sleep is not on point, that losing weight is not going to be, or losing fat is rather what I'd say, is not going to be my body's top priority, okay? I'm gonna say this again. Didn't say this tonight, but I say this all the time. Your body has been designed to do two things. Can somebody, actually, I want somebody to comment. Do you know what those two things are? What is your body designed to do? 
what is it always doing data within itself to see what it can either this or that? If you know the answer, put it in the comments. Or if you'd like to guess, put it in the comments, okay? Your body is designed to do two things. But we always think as humans, because our psychology, this bullshit gets in the way, okay? So if you know the answer, just take a guess, just take a guess. But I think most of you have followed me quite a bit where you will know the answer. Okay. There you go. All right, Patricia, that's right. Reproduce and survive. So your body is always looking to see, can Patricia have a baby right now? Can she survive? It's always asking itself that question, okay? And if you don't know that, then you're always gonna think your body's working against you. If you don't know that it's looking to always survive or reproduce, you're gonna be like, oh, what the heck? Okay, so using me as an example, stress on the body, lack of sleep, body saying, we need to survive. We need more sleep, we've got to survive. And I really want you to have a baby. So we need more sleep and we need more fat. We got to cling on to this. Does that make sense? That's a very good, um, a very good uh, possibility there. Amanda had chosen heal and reproduce. And that was a very good, close answer. Hi, Amanda. It's so funny. I'm going to say something. This is really funny. Amanda and Kathy Jenkins. I was talking about both of you yesterday. Both of you. So funny. <laughs> so I was like, when I saw that you were both in the feed, I'm like, whoa, see, it's, there's the universe for you. You pull in what you put out. All right. So moving on, we're going to talk about the quiz. We're going to talk about the quiz you guys took. Are you ready? Are you ready to understand? This is a clinical tool, you guys, that I use for my clients. This is something that I um, use as a starting point. This is something that is extremely um, oh, helpful, I guess you would say, um, when you took your quiz, you were then, oh, absolutely. Um, Kathy says good things, I hope. Yes, absolutely. Um, I was talking about that meat place and Amanda actually works at a meat place downtown. And yeah, so that's where that connection came in. So I use this as a tool. So you guys took your quiz. You were then guided to an email that said, here, watch this video. So all of you fell into one of these three types, okay? You were either insulin dominant, you were either stress dominant, or you were blended. Now this is a spectrum, okay? So this basically is telling me and you how your body is burning its fuel. If you were somebody that was stress dominant, then you are somebody that is stressed out and your body is really leaning towards its muscle for fuel. If you are insulin dominant, then your body is really kind of learn, leaning towards the sugars and all of that stuff. And you probably are very carb, have a very heavy carbohydrate diet as well. Again, this is just assuming this is not fact, but this is a general kind of a, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, a quiz that just kind of helps me to place people in the spectrum. Now, I have every one of your scores. I know exactly where you fell on the spectrum. So for example, let's say an insulin dominant individual is um, and a blended individual, let's say the score for uh, an insulin and a blended is like a 34, 35. Now, some of you are on the cusp. Some of you maybe have scored as a blended, but you're one point away of being insulin dominant. Not very good. Now let's talk about the blended and let's talk about something for a second. You are burning all fuels all the time. Now don't disregard that fact. But when you are testing as more of your stress or insulin dominant, this all has to do with you guys, your lifestyle practices and how you are living in your day-to-day -day life. Most of you probably were going, oh my God, during that video. If you were, if you were shaking your head going, oh man, this sounds like me, then give me a yes. If it didn't sound like you whatsoever, give me a no, it didn't sound like me, okay? 
and we all can fit a little bit in here, but again, some of, you know, like a stress dominant person, they don't live to eat. They don't really give a shit about eating generally. You know, they are uh, people that they forget to eat. They're just like, yeah, whatever. And, you know, somebody like an insulin dominant, generally they are very um, carb, you know, they, they just love their carbs and they're more foodie kind of people. Like everybody, you know, everybody kind of falls in these little categories. So now, this is a spectrum and people will bounce depending on how they're living their life. So I have my clients take their quiz every five to six weeks or so, so that we can definitely keep up with the changes because we are constantly adapting. Okay. And so since we are always adapting, we have to make sure that we are working with what the body needs. Now, it is possible that somebody might go from a, a stress dominant over to an insulin, then over to a blended. Or sometimes a blended might go to an insulin to a stress. Now, where do you want to be on this spectrum? Ideally, you want to be right there somewhere in the middle and kind of maintaining that because you want to have, you want to give your body that nice balance. You don't want to be over here all stressed the heck out and your body eating all its muscle because what happens with muscle? We then become weight loss resistant. And let me just tell you something. And this just kind of popped in my head. We don't have a weight loss issue. We have a weight gain rebound issue because what happens is people lose weight then they gain weight and plus some. That's the problem. And then people are like, I don't know what to do. And a lot of the time, a lot of it has to do with muscle loss, okay? So muscle retention is a really, really, really important thing that you need to consider, okay? So we've got these, these three different types. If you have any questions on that, let me know. Now I'm gonna move on. Each one of you were sent a plate, okay? Now, let me see if I can zoom in. I don't think I can. This is your plate visual. The reason why I have spread out day one to day two of the series is so that you, my friend, can start eating according to your plate, okay? So over here on the far left, I should have slapped these two. <laughs> this one over here, this plate should have been the insulin, but that's okay. So over here on the far left, and let me just tell you this, you guys, don't hop off of here and retake the quiz. Do not retake the quiz and I will see if you did and please don't because then it will be flooding my email. Stick with what you were given because generally when I, even in the very beginning, when I said take this quiz and think fast through it, don't overthink it, okay? Use the plate you were given because I'm telling you it's generally that starch right there, that wedge, that is the amount of starch that you should have on your plate, starch your carb. Now, when you eat your meals, this is what your plate should mimic. This is what it should look like. You should have, so if you were an insulin dominant burner, you should have two or three vegetables and or fruit on that side of the, the plate. If you have, you know, then you would have your lean proteins and then you would have your wedge of your carbs. And I put in there tipping point Okay. The reason why that's, that is actually, those are actual numbers that is information that I provide to my clients. So I covered that up just being honest because a paying client, I give the information to, excuse me, to them because they paid me to give them that information. Now, what I am giving you is the visual, but you will have to kind of figure out your tipping point and playing around with it. Does that make sense? Okay. So between now and Sunday, there's two things that, that need to go on. Number one, let me go back. Oops. Let's go here. I'm going to, again, I'm going to be sending you a couple bonuses. Okay. We need to do what? Relax, prioritize our sleep. And we need to figure out our carbohydrate tipping point. You can wake up tomorrow and put your breakfast together according to what your plate looks like. You can print it out, put it on your refrigerator, put a copy in your purse, put a copy in your desk drawer. I am telling you 
this tool will give you an absolutely amazing kick. And not only that, more importantly, it will give you the biggest eye opener of your portions and what you are and how you are actually eating. Okay. So we're ending tonight with these three practices and our plate. So I want you to make sure that you get your plate and then you start to eat according to that. You start implementing these practices about 11 o'clock tonight. Check your email, 11 o'clock. Is it your time, 11 o'clock? Yes. When it's your time, 11 o'clock, you will receive, like I said, there was that complicated automation in the beginning of this. You're going to receive some bonuses from me. So keep your eyes out for that. And there will be a replay of this video for you as well. Now we are going to meet again next, this coming Sunday, which would be the 27th at 7.30. And we're going to go over part two. Now, if, and I will, I will send another email on this too. I'm just going to plant a seed. If you want to have a conversation with me about your score and you want to understand this whole process, I am putting this out there. You can set up a quick 15 minute call with me. So if you want to do that, you know, if you already know that you want to do it and you don't want to wait for the email, just private message me and I will, I will get back to you and we'll set up a call. Okay. So trust me, this tidbit of information, the, this stuff here is really, really good information. <laughs> so make sure you use it. Okay. So if you have any questions right now, um, please let me know. Oh my goodness. It's eight 30. Holy shit. Wow, that went by fast. I told my, my um, clients, I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop at eight o'clock and then we'll do our coaching calls. So they're probably going, where are you? Like, what's going on? Hey, Alicia. Okay, so um, we're going to sign off now. Um, you will get a, an email tonight around 11 o'clock your time. And you're going to get some bonus and uh, bonuses from me, some bonus gifts. And if you want to set up a 15 minute call and talk about your personal score, because I've got your number, baby, you can do that. All right. So just private message me or email me or what have you. But I will be sending out an email that basically says, hey, you know, um, yeah, you can. Yep. If you haven't taken the test, you're going to get an email. Um, and I think that information is in that email tonight. So it's just kellydunlap.com forward slash quiz. Okay. Yeah, Susan, that would be information that I would be able to provide to you if you were my client. Um, but that's something that you will have to kind of figure out on your own. This is where the, the detective in you comes in, okay? And, you know, it's just something that we have to, well, the, again, <laughs> Patricia says, I don't understand. Listen, try to get your visual, try to duplicate the, the plate that I gave you, okay? Just go with the visual first. And while you're doing that, you want to feel, you want to go about the way that you're feeling. Now, again, people pay me to give them the cliff notes and the shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was like, okay, I'm going to give you guys the visual, but I can't give you the information that people pay me for. You know what I mean? Then it wouldn't be fair to my clients, right? I'm sure you can appreciate that. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. But again, we can set up a call. Um, we can go over your score in more details and I got to go because my clients are probably going, what the hell? So, all right, you guys have a wonderful night. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, again, watch the email and I will be in touch. And then our next um, part two will be on Sunday, the 27th at 730 Eastern Standard Time. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Oops. If I can sign off. <laughs>